Good morning guys, welcome back to this Idaho Archery Elk series. Hopefully, hopefully you guys have been following along and hopefully you have at least watched yesterday's video so you know what has led us to today. Time to track down this bull and see if he's dead. Hunt him down or whatever we gotta do, but we just got to where we can park and studying the Onyx map was just gonna do a line distance real quick on how far he was from the truck. And this is no joke. Where I shot that bull on the mountain, he has literally taken the path of least resistance. He got to a fence line. He just couldn't jump it or he just didn't want to, but he followed the fence line for quite a while. And line distance from where we're parked right now to where we last saw blood is only 430 yards. So here's the scenario. He was walking across this yellow grass flat. The fence line dipped down into a cedar canyon or like a draw, I guess you could call it. But right before that, he peeled off the fence, which is weird because he's been at the fence the whole time for quite a while. He peeled left. Martin and I just kind of like cut it from there because we, we did pass one bed where there's blood. It's like, okay, he bedded once. He's going to want to bed again quick. So we made a big, big loop and made a detour around the draw to get back to the truck to hopefully not push him last night. So we're going to make a big detour back, get right back on the blood. And honestly, Fingers crossed that this thing is piled up in that in those cedars somewhere. But if not, we'll have the bow. We'll have an arrow knocked probably once we get close. And just gonna do our best to finish him and put put this thing to rest and and uh, wrap up this hunt. So I'm just gonna get ready and and head out there. This is kind of the cedar draw that he dipped into, but he's probably 500 yards up the ridge. At least that's where we think he went in. We're gonna get to where we last found his track. I know it's gonna be a lot easier to see in the daylight. And we'll just kind of go from there, really slow. Yeah, this is his first bed that we found last night. I'm assuming we bumped him out. We were literally just walking the fence line right behind you and he just laid in like the most random spot. Bumped him from here, not because we wanted to, just because this is this, we were walking back to the truck. And uh, after this is where he's down in the cedars. At this point, we're not following any blood. He hasn't bled since his bed. This is where we we marked last night. This is my from my boot track. We're just following tracks at this point. And good, thank goodness it rained yesterday. So it's soft. We can track him. And it didn't rain overnight, so got lucky there. We're about to drop in these cedars, so. Uh, hoping for the best, but prepared for the worst said that before. We're just gonna go real slow.
Well, you guys are getting our butt kicked. The bull just kind of walked, 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 walked. And he came out in this yellow grass and it's so hard to follow his track, so. New development is blood bloodhounds are legal to aid in the recovery of big game in Idaho. So I'm texting the guy right now. He's asking a lot of questions. BMAC has been through this. BMAC told me he would. I'm gonna text him. If he tells us to pull out, we will. But for now, we're just kind of trying to get some elevation and glass down in these bottoms. The way he's walking, I figured he'd e he's either going to be in one of these bottoms or literally just out in the yellow grass. He might die. He might just need more time to die. That's kind of where we're at. I'm going to text uh, this guy. He's a couple hours away, so I just want to give every effort I legally can to recover this bull. And if it means get a dog up here, then it's worth it. I don't care how much it costs. We just got him guys, I hit him good. I hit him good, found him. Found him, and he's hit again. He's got two more in him. Come on buddy, go down. Oh, I freaking thumped him. Go down, come on, go down. I know he's hit hard again, right behind the shoulder. There's no way, come on. Freaking drilled him. Come on dude, just go down. Go down dude, come on. Guys, I'm just gonna sit and watch him. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. I just freaking drilled him. He's still going. I gotta get high and just watch him, guys. He's going into some thick trees right now, so. I thought he was just gonna tip over. I still see him. I don't wanna push him too hard. This sucks. I'm glad we found him though, but. That's gotta kill him. Forty-seven yards, Corbin away, right at me. Snuck one in right behind the shoulder. That's gotta kill him. I don't know how he's still walking. He stopped. Well, guys, I, like I'm, I'm not proud of this whole situation, but I'm proud that we've stayed after it. This bull had come up in the direction that we second guessed. It was. It was part of our plan to check this line, just like Martin said. He was like, dude, he was kind of parallel in that. I'm like, I feel like he went that way too, just based off his natural line. So we started to this north of here. Couldn't turn anything up. I was right above here and jumped five uh, deer. I was like, well, maybe they'll stand him up and I'll see him. I watched the deer until they were way, way off in the valley. I was right up here, just I was zigzagging these cedars to look for him dead or alive. And up there at 47 yards, boom, he's right here. So new, this is new blood. That's not from the old hits. You can see on my video, he's running away. I was like total zoomed in and shaky as heck, but the arrow is right behind the shoulder. My only worry is it's like in the armpit and not in the chest cavity, but he's bleeding so much and Martin and I both saw him go into those cedars. I'm gonna give him some time, calm back down, and uh, I could see him standing over there probably like 10 minutes ago. It sucks, but we're definitely not gonna let this guy get away. My lucky spike shed I just found. He's gonna die in there, dude, look at that. We watched him bed in the trees, he's sick. He's got his head doing death wobble looking thing. Ah, poor guy. We're gonna sit here for a minute and let him get comfortable. I might have to sneak in and shoot him again. It was right behind the shoulder, but with the hard quarter, I wonder if it hit ribs and went under the armpit and not like into the cavity. Because if it went into the cavity, I think he'd just be 
dead by now. It's gonna sit tight for a minute. Well, it's over. <laughs> Sucks. I'm gonna lie. <laughs> I hate to see something go down like that. That's not how you want it to go down. Pretty shooken up, to be honest. I feel like I got in a car crash or something. It sucks to see him like that. I mean, that was a dead bull last night, but we just knew it wasn't gonna die right away. Not proud of how it went down, but proud that we stuck on it. This is nothing to brag about, but that's the third bull I've had to shoot more than once. When you go through that, you're always dreaming of that one shot kill. And I got that last year and it felt so good. One shot, runs, tips over dead in my sight. Then you do that and you're like, dang, this sucks, man. I got to uh, 19 yards behind him, got the best angle I could, let one rip and never got out of his bed. We're gonna get over there and take care of him and everything. But I hope you guys appreciate the honesty and transparency on this channel throughout the years not just this hunt but you guys not only see our successes but you see our failures we hope that you learn something through our videos whether it's a good thing or what not to do i mean other than just making a bad shot i think we did everything good we were patient but it's over it's wild he's probably two and a half three miles from where i hit him lucky for us he's literally 100 yards from the road so we got the yeti with ice and we'll take care of him and get on but it's over, man. We got him. Me. We got him, man. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> that Hell was, yeah. That was, that was a beast, oh, man. Tough one that was, huh? Like, with the hard angle, just too forward. We're talking inches, though. Yeah. I mean, I they would have killed him, I think. He's, he's a dead bull sitting here. And following the blood into him now, I could see that he was coagulated, like really jello-y. But um, I slipped in behind him and put one in him and he didn't even get out of his bed. It was crazy, man. So he's just laying here and he's like 100 yards off the road. That's perfect because you got a fight to catch. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so we'll take care of him and we got a Yeti with ice and we'll get out of here. Good job on the trail, man. I know how hard that can be. Yeah. Stick with it, man. Thanks, dude. I Good just job. Could, I just Good job. I couldn't imagine him getting away. I just didn't make sense. I knew he had to be in there somewhere. Good job, man. That's freaking rad. I'm so stoked. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, be safe and keep me posted. Okay, man. I'll catch you later. Be hey. Two big yeah. bull, two bulls down in a week, huh? Doesn't suck, huh? No, that's awesome. So. Not bad at all. Great it's week, of, great week of elk hunting for sure. Off to a pretty good start this season. Mm-hmm. Cool, man. We'll take care of that bad boy and uh, holler at me later. Okay, man. I'll catch you later. Good job. Yep. Thanks, B. See ya. Bye. Bye. I know I said this earlier, but I didn't talk much about it, but B Mac shot a big, big bull two days ago, three days ago. <laughs> really big bull. Pretty bull. And awesome footage, and I'm happy for B Mac and, and the other guys for getting that done, and we got it done on a bull. It wasn't, wasn't Hollywood, like I said, but it's not always glamorous and I'm just uh, happy we stuck with it. So, got a lot of work to do. I'm gonna break them down, guys, and 
get him on ice. Good thing he laid here and mostly in the shade. That's going to help too. 